Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Caravan of Garbage, where it's terminated to Judgment Day. Keep going. It's Judgment Day's upon us. It's 1997. It's a big nuclear bomb. I'm swept away, Judge, by this movie. It speaks so well to that original theme from the 80s, where you're able to make this huge orchestral number right you know it's, it's it doesn't have that kind of you wouldn't think that it would necessarily lend itself to that you know and initially but my goodness but as we know from last week it's also versatile it's got a sexy time version that's true you know there should have been a fun at the mall version you know yeah i'm john connor i'm playing missile command I'm a redhead kid. I'm lying to a cop. It has a bit of some slap bass in it. <laughs> what a legend that kid is, though. Oh, right? Just, just casually saves humanity. No, I don't know him, man. Yeah, Sorry. True saviour of the universe. Exactly, yeah. That's what you want in a true friend. <laughs> that's right, yeah. Uh, a, a ginger mullet kid. You know, that's what we all need in our lives, a ginger mullet kid to listen, have our back. Listen, in all seriousness, you don't have to tell the cops goddamn anything <laughs> right. at any point, all right? Ask for a lawyer. Well, that'd be James Cameron's <laughs> advice. He's not a fan of cops. Clearly. No, he's not. He's absolutely not. Is that yeah. that is why the T one thousand is based yep. on a cop, right? Because he can go anywhere and do anything. That is one hundred percent true. Anyways, please leave a like on this video because, of course, one of the biggest action blockbusters of all time, the most expensive movie ever made when it came out. That's right. Now, of course, the twist in this, which we are going to spoil, was not initially revealed in the teaser trailer. They gave Stan Winston $150,000 to make something that indicated that, yes, the Terminator was coming back. Mm -hmm. And we got this assembly line making I remember that, of yeah. the T-800. Mm -hmm. Why don't they do this anymore? You know, right. teasers like this. Okay, but the full trailer did They reveal. did spoil it, yes, I acknowledge that. In fact, I think that the trailer was like, now there are two Terminator 2. One's and a liquid guy, he's the bad one. Arnold Schwarzenegger's good now. He was bad in the other one. And I understand, like, obviously, they've built this incredible new technology. Well, he, they started on the Abyss. Yes. And then they've sort of, you know, revamped it and improved it for this. Obviously, you want to draw people in, and it worked. You want to show people this technology in the trailer to get them in, mm -hmm. but man, if they if they didn't do it, because again, show someone this. By the way, someone who doesn't know, show them the first one and then show them this one. Because again, it starts out almost exactly like the yeah. first one, and just to turn it around so quickly, you know, there's the moment where the T1000 he's he's transported to the present day, and then the the cop comes to look at the electrical disturbance. It just looks like the T1000's giving me a gut punch yeah. or whatever. But in retrospect, you're like, oh no, he he, he stabbed that man. he stabbed that guy through the heart that's yeah and he's so personable like when he goes to john connor's house you know well that's interesting as well because i think in retrospect when we look at when we look back on these movies and i think also because robert patrick did a version of this in other media like he did it in a wayne's world movie yes and he did it, it in the last action hero yeah like i think we think back about this character like oh he's so unfeeling and and sinister and sinister but the initial yeah, appearance of this guy when he's when he goes to the foster parents when he when he's talking to the kids at the mall you know etc. Mm. He he's really genial and you're like oh like if I didn't know yeah it's interesting because he doesn't do that when he's not around people mm. like you see him switch it on yeah it's incredible what an amazing performance what an amazing find because James Cameron of course wanted somebody unknown but he wasn't the first choice oh. Was it T-1000? Was it Lance Henriks again? No, Mason. He died in the first movie. Yeah, but still. Remember? Yeah. He got machine gun. Yeah, but Cyber uh, Skynet doesn't have all the files. No. So maybe they'd be like, maybe he lived. <laughs> yeah, maybe he lived. So the original idea for this was to send back two Terminators, mm -hmm. and they were both Arnold. So it was Arnold v. Arnold, then the good Arnold wins, uh -huh. and then as a last-ditch effort, they send back this experimental liquid metal okay. one. Okay. When did Double Impact come out, the Jean-Claude Van Damme movie? <laughs> That's a great question. Isn't it, though? Yeah. I can't remember. <laughs> Here's the year. It's big on the screen. <laughs> That's great. Uh, then it was thought, look, we'll just scrap that idea. We'll just go with the T-1000 version, mm -hmm. and it was going to be the return of Mr. Bean. Yes. So they, they flip it even more, where mm. Kyle Reese is the is the face of the villain this time around. Mm -hmm. That also wouldn't really work either because that would mean Skynet knows who he is because as far as they know, mm. he's just one of many soldiers. They would have targeted him specifically in the future if they thought he was important. That's true. I mean, I don't hate the, the idea of it, and I think that would also that would add an interesting element to this because... Sarah Connor has seen him die and then he returns and then she'd be like, Absolutely. Is, has she gone off the deep end kind of thing? Which is, you know, an element yeah. to this where everybody's trying to convince her she's crazy even though she's right. Oh my God. I love that element of this movie where, uh, first of all, her character development, 
what a performance. And the muscles, the yeah. bad dreams that she's having, the range that she displays in this is incredible. And like you mentioned, she's right. And there are people that know she's right and they're just letting her rot in jail, mm. basically. Yeah, amazing. And, of course, Linda Hamilton's twin sister is in this, the extended version, which is the one that we There's watched. There's a couple of twins in this, right? Oh, yeah, there is. There's the two guys from Gremlins, Gremlins 2, mm-hmm. I believe. Uh, one stabs the other through the eye. Yes. And Linda Hamilton's twin sister, who has since passed away. Yeah, I mean, it's such a good and cheap way to do an effect yep. if you've just got two of the same people. Uh-huh. Well, it's not an effect. You could just, It's just two people. Yeah. See, also Xander and Buffy. Or his twin brother in? Oh, yeah. In. Uh, who the else? The Ashmores. The Ashmores. Mm-hmm. Have they ever played twins in a thing? That's a great question. Mm, I think they're I think they're against it. They're against it? Mm-hmm, sure. Well, maybe they're just waiting for the right role. Hey, can I get a role in Quantum Break? No. <laughs> Only I may be in the game Quantum Break. <laughs> Other Ashmore. Get out of here. Oh, my goodness. And this Terminator movie also has my favourite version of John Connor, the guy from the future. <laughs> The guy who doesn't get any lines? His name's Michael Edwards. Uh He has actually reprised the role of John Connor in a fan film called Skynet, a Terminator fan film, which is set many, many years after the war. Is it set in the... Or at the end of the war. Is it set in the peaceful future where he's wearing a tucked in salmon-coloured sweater? No, Mason, that's only in the extended version, We did watch the extended version, so in in the original version, he only gets the one scene. uh, Yeah. Post-apocalyptic 2029, he's got the scar on his face, but then in the the extended version version we see you know the 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 war has been averted and he's playing with with his daughter on the playground and uh there's some there's some pretty horrendous old sarah connor makeup going on and some very horrendous future fashion oh yeah it seems like the back to the future to future (laughs) that's what they've stumbled into just headbands and jumpsuits all the way down the line i like to and i am jumping to the end the ambiguity of this ending and it's not an ending because these movies will go forever Mm. that it is very much up in the air and it's just, and I know you like this, it's just this ongoing time war. It just goes and goes. And I also like the idea that the reason that all the John Connors look different is because they're all different sperm. Sure. So Why are you always thinking about sperm when you're watching these movies? Because the idea that if you came back yeah, yeah. and shoved somebody... It would change everything. That's true. And every time you go back in time and you you shake it about <laughs> yeah. in different manners, you're going to get a different, a different sperm. That's true. But I also love the idea because obviously in the first in the first Terminator movie, they only have time to send back one Terminator and one Resistance fighter. Yeah. And they've sort of retconned it slightly here, so it's like, well, actually, there was another room, and there was another there was room for another yes. Terminator and, a, and, a, and an additional T800. I love the idea that this. This time frame keeps getting retconned. Now, and there's more and more rooms. There's more and more rooms, and it's a long weekend now. And- <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Well, actually, the original opening for this mm. that they didn't film but did storyboard was going to be the intro to Terminator 1, mm. and then they find the second room. They find that one of the T-800s has been off the shelf. That's in the novel. It's in the novel, exactly. And also, they did it in Terminator Genesis. Yeah. Until mm. Matt Smith showed up and changed all the sperm. <laughs> it's Matt Smith. With his sperm-changing ray gun. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, love all of that. But yeah, the John Connor they got here is played by Edward Furlong. I think he's a good find. Mm -hmm. I think there is kind of a... um, There's an amateur kind of element to some of the line readings, but that's also because a lot of this movie is 80 yard as well. Yeah. And it's uh very noticeable on him. But I like the the kind of attitude that he brings to this. Same. Because he, I know he, he, his father wasn't around when he was cast. He wasn't an actor. Like James Cameron was looking for somebody who was just kind of a rotten kid, you know? And I'm not (laughs) saying he's a rotten kid, but I'm saying there is that attitude there, you know? And not just the hasta la vista and the slang. That stuff is very cringe, Mason. Did Edward Furlong (laughs) hold him up at at an ATM or something? (laughs) That's right. Hey, old man, give me all your money. You got something, kid. And I do have a lot of money. (laughs) (laughs) You you pegged me good. I do have a lot of money. I have submarine money. That's right, he does, doesn't he? Or maybe not at this point. No. Uh, I have multiple divorces money. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, the T-800 returns in this. Mm -hmm. And what I like about the return of Arnold is that he's outdated. Yeah. And there is this tension of like, fuck, this guy's getting whittled away through this movie, you know? I also appreciate that he has no... Look, one of the things that I appreciate about this movie is on the larger scale that when the T-800 and the T-1000 fight, they're just silent 
killers. Yeah. There's no quips. There's no, no nothing. They're not playing for an audience. They're just trying to kill each other. Yeah. So it's just deathly silence. They're also of the same technology. Yeah. So obviously one's just more advanced than the mm. other. Yeah. But I also love the idea that the T-800 knows he's not going anywhere after this. So it, it doesn't bother him at all that all these pieces are coming off. No. You know, when he has to reveal to, to Miles Dyson that he is a Terminator, he just whips all the skin off his arm and then he just puts a glove over the top. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm not, I'm not going to need any of that skin later. <laughs> Who cares? Exactly, yeah. That first confrontation they have in the hallway, mm -hmm. just coming to a head, the Pepsi can guy just gets obliterated in the process. <laughs> right. Just happened to be there. But the way that they were kind of built was that the T-800 is like a tank. He's like a Sherman tank. Mm -hmm. Like there's there's no bells and whistles to him. Mm -hmm. He's just he's just like a battering ram. Mm -hmm. And the T-1000 is like a Porsche. He's probably not as strong because he I does... I was going to say he's a young Sherman <laughs> yes. tank. <laughs> That's the name of the sitcom, right? Yeah. Young Sherman? Young Sherman tank. Mm. So he's, he's probably... He doesn't have the mass mm. and like that metal skeleton. Uh -huh. But, you know, he could do a thing where if you punch him in the head, he'll morph his arm around and whatever. Oh, oh great stuff. We've got to talk about the special effects in this. But just quickly... Nah, the we can skip them. Yeah, it's fine. People get it. <laughs> yeah. The only conversation those two have is when they're on the phone pretending to be other people. Yes. Uh huh. I love that. And then, of course, that first chase sequence down the canal. Mm -hmm. Just incredible. Like, my God. Unbelievable stuff. D Real the, truck crash. Does that canal ever have water in it? Why, why would it need water? It's a great point. It's good for bikes. It is good for bikes. That's true, yeah. Mm. That's a good question. I guess they emptied it for this at the very least, yeah. It's where they have the race in Greece, probably, Mason. You know? Oh, yeah. It's a similar it's situation. When the, it's where Buckaroo Banzo and all his <laughs> friends walk in, right? That's he, true. They have, little, they have a little strut down in the canal, right? Oh, I love all of that. Mm, yeah, yeah. That's but, a real truck crash, but the if I remember correctly, when, when Arnold Orridge stunt double motorcycle jump yeah. down, that's on wires, right? It is. I mean, it is. it just basically takes the, the heavy landing out of it. But yeah, yeah that's a real jump, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the T-1000, the idea of that was actually in the original Terminator and it was thought by James Cameron, or we could do like a claymation version of this, mm -hmm. which is also... Like Clay Fighter. Like Clay Fighter, mm. which was also considered for the Abyss. We have talked about the Abyss, like that mm. that water face. Like, yeah. can you project something onto a claymation yeah. kind of... And I'm glad they kind of waited to do this. There's actually only 42 CGI shots in this entire movie. But we remember all of them. Oh, just incredible. And you know what I think really sells it? I mean, there's a number of things, but the reflections on it are Absolutely. so good. Yeah. I think also they get better towards the end i think i think the yes the, the money is being spent very well here they're like okay we need this to be completely and totally convincing towards the end like when he emerges from the truck yeah or when he when he regenerates from the 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 liquid nitrogen explosion mm. and you, you see all the fire reflected in him is reforming that looks incredible unbelievable you know? it's never been done better except for the movie terminator genesis with the T-1000. <laughs> that's right. God, that's a good movie, isn't it? Mm, no. <laughs> no, I don't think it is. You know what else? It I, had potential. It, that's all I'm saying. It did. Well, James Cameron liked it or mm. said he liked it. Yeah. What I find interesting about the T-1000 is also the lore behind it, which isn't really in the movie, but just that he's a bit of a loose unit. He's one of a kind. Yes. Uh -huh. Skynet. Also, he's got he's he's got a swelled head about it. <laughs> he might just. You're going to time travel me first class, right? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Skynet didn't want to send him. They'd lost the war and it was a last ditch effort. But they didn't want to send him also because if they put something like this back in time, mm -hmm. what does he... What does he evolve into if you just leave something like that by itself? All oh, right. They didn't even know what he was going to do, really. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Where, where are you getting this? This is from? all like behind the scenes and book stuff and whatever. Okay. He also initially went back in a flesh sack because, you know, there's that question of if he's made of metal, how does he time travel? He just does. He's the bad guy. He it's just fine. does, all right? Yeah. His skin can mimic enough, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter. But look, special effects. There is a lot of traditional filmmaking techniques in this. There's stuff in this which has been used in the first Terminator. There's stop motion in the future mm -hmm. sequence. There's a rear projection of some Terminators walking in the background. Those are stop motion and the foreground ones are like the puppeteered ones, uh -huh, right? Yeah. There's things like that. There's a lot of rear projection in this movie and there's obvious stuff like when they escape the psychiatric hospital, it looks pretty obvious that they're, that's rear projection when uh -huh. you know Sarah Connor's checking John Connor. 
But the one shot that I never noticed, it's where Arnold lifts Edward Furlong off the bike. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. That's rear projection. Right and here. it's so quick. Mm. And it's in broad daylight. I, di- I never spotted it. Mm. I, I just think that's incredible. Pretty good. Anyway, the digital stuff. Yeah. The meat of it. Again, every every moment of that, like you said, is only 40-something shots. But every single mm. one of those from, you know, the initial, the bullet holes sealing themselves yeah. up on the T-1000. The moment where the T-1000 pushes the spike through the oh. elevated doors and then turns it into, like, hooks to, to pull the door open. I think that's my... I f- mean, a safety switch would have kicked in order. <laughs> they would have opened up automatically. But he did it. He he's, did it He's anyway. a robot. Yeah. That's actually, I think, it's got my favourite line and moment in this movie. My new favourite moment, I guess, because I'd never noticed it before. When the door opens and Arnold, like, blasts his head and it splits apart, Sarah Connor just goes, what the fuck is going on? Like, she's seen so much stuff. Yeah. But even her at this point is just like, I don't know what's happening. Yeah. Somebody explain. I thought I, I honestly, I thought I was on top of all this crazy stuff. <laughs> and uh, now you've brought in this real diva of a robot. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. But also, I should point out, a lot of the T-1000 stuff is practical. The exploding head is a practical yeah, head pulling uh-huh. apart. The squibs are designed to kind of balloon out to look like liquid metal. If I remember correctly, the the moment where he has been frozen by the liquid nitrogen, his arm and leg comes off. That's real. That yeah. is a, that is a person with uh, with uh, who's an amputee. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Exactly, and it's just shot in a way where. Oh. And the, the the moment in the psychiatric hospital where the the checkerboard floor comes up mm. and turns into a man, that was just a very flat man, <laughs> right? <laughs> but he could only do it once. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm glad he saved it for this movie. My personal favorite. T-1000 moments. Oh, mine's the checkerboard floor. Well, that's good too. But the 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 bit where he turds out of the elevator roof <laughs> right, that's or, when right. he, or when he turds into the helicopter. Sure. I just like him turning into something. Is that is that a verb now, is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you... I think maybe you should see a doctor or something. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Is that what your mornings are like? It's horrendous. <laughs> More fibrous. I, I, thought think, you meant, I thought you meant for my brain. I mean... A doctor of the brain. I mean both ends, man. Yeah, you're probably right, yeah. So, yeah, obviously a big point of this movie, which was going to be done in the first, but they carried over here, was stop the war. Stop the future war. Mm. Destroy the bits of the Terminator that were left over from the first movie and, and shut down Cyberdyne and, and all of that. Uh-huh. Uh, well, we got to do it. Mason's minigun minute. Here we go. Uh, incredible. It's the classic minigun, obviously. It's the same one yep. for Predator. Um, he's told not to kill anybody. That's true. Is that a problem for you? Yeah, it gets zero out of ten because he doesn't kill anybody. But, but zero point zero casualties. If that's I recall right, correctly. yeah, yeah. anyway, and zero point zero out of ten. But mm. man, it's it's. Uh, I mean, I think the rate of fire is probably a little slow for that. They slowed it down. Yeah. They slowed the sound effect down. Yeah, yeah. So you, so it's not just a like a buzz. But I mean, that's I mean, that's you know, that is the nature of a minigun in Hollywood because like realistically, you'd get one second of firing out of that, and <laughs> yeah. it'd be out of bullets. So. Yeah. You're probably right, yeah. But that's cool. It's cool as hell. It's cool as hell. The cool as hell bit as well, when Arnold walks down the corridor, it does cut to a puppet head you see a few times when the the squibs are going off on the face. Yeah, yeah. And he shoots that dude in the back with a gas canister. (laughs) Just unnecessarily cruel. Yeah. I, and also, what's amazing about no, that's that, I mean, that's that's I mean, if, if I may, just the moment where he just they they all take shots at him and then they're they're pausing to reload and he just kneecaps all of them. <laughs> it's so funny. It is, and also because they all lived. Yeah. How do you how do you explain that? How do you how do you live with that moment? Yeah. For the rest of your life, they're, it's, they're all being interviewed by the chief, and he's like, "Did you miss him? No, we shot him hundreds of times." <laughs> And then, well, well, he kneecapped all of us. Yeah. And he just walked right up to us and he, and he shot all of us clean through the knee. Boy, did he, yeah. The T-1000 getting into the helicopter when he turns into it. <laughs> that helicopter pilot is, uh, he's the guy who did the stunt with the helicopter flying under the bridge. Oh. Amazing. Love that. Practical. But, yeah, here's a new segment of the show. Go on. It's called... It's called Turning Around with James Clement. <laughs> no, it's called Meso owes Robert Patrick a single dollar. Oh, why Why is this? We watched this years ago. Oh, is it the three-arm thing? It's the three-arm thing. Okay. And I said I'd heard that there's a few shots where you can see uh, the T-1000 using three arms. So he's shooting with some and using a third arm to steer the helicopter. Yeah, because you need, well, you need two hands to operate a helicopter. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I mean, he's doing that and he's got one hand out with a gun. And I was like, that seems insane. Yes. But you're right. But is that... <laughs> no, but you said yes. if that happens in the movie, yeah. that you would send Robert Patrick a single dollar. Then I guess I'm going to. <laughs> he's not fair. on Cameo. You're going to have to figure it out. I'll figure it out. He's on Instagram. I'll send him a dollar. Uh, or I'll send a dollar to his charity of his choice. Great. I mean, with inflation, it's... 
Probably a little bit more. And it's probably, if, if we'll, we'll say it's a US dollar, so we'll... Okay, yeah. sure. In fairness, that sounds insane. And you'd think they'd make a bigger deal <laughs> of it. They don't. I yeah. never noticed it. Is this only in the extended version, though? No, I don't think so. You okay. can see snippets of it in Regardless, the Regardless, I'm we, a man of my word. Yeah, so but we watched it on, like, VHS taped off the TV or mm. whatever. Like, I'm still surprised by all the swearing in this because the version that I watched again and again was the version that was taped off TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So, yeah, it all culminates in the final sequence in the uh, the big steel mill, which is actually super cold. They just made it look super hot. Oh. That's crazy. So, yeah. I mean, the bit where the Terminator stands on the front of the truck and just empties a machine gun yes. into the T-1000 <laughs> yeah. is great. The, the truck flips. That's a miniature truck as it flips. Like, it cuts between a real truck and a miniature one and then a real one again. Uh-huh. And then, of course, you know, the, the bit where he shoots him or whatever and he, and he breaks <laughs> apart. In the extended version, that's when he starts to malfunction. Yes. Uh-huh. Which I think is really interesting. And I understand why they probably cut out some of those malfunctioning moments because I, I don't think it's 100% convincing. Yeah, I'd agree with whereas that. Whereas the rest of it yeah. absolutely is. That handshake one he does is really he, good. He, yeah, his, his hand starts to replicate the hazard mm. tape on a banister or a, a gantry and then yeah. he shakes it out. Yeah, that's a bit of fun. That bit when they have that punch up and he hits the wall and he reverses. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Jesus Christ. And when Arnold like splits him with the crowbar. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Just, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Sarah Connor's like racking the shotgun and like you think, oh, well, she's going to be the one to destroy the Terminator because it's Sarah Connor. And then she runs out of bullets. And you're like, why don't you just tackle him into the right. <laughs> fucking lava or whatever? Uh-huh. God. And there's, of course, the moment where um, the T-1000. I'm just naming things yeah, that I know, I like. right? <laughs> well, it's, it's one of those videos, I'm afraid. Yeah. The moment where the T-1000 pins Arnold to the floor with a big spike. Yeah. And you look, there, I mean, there is a moment now having rewatched this movie, you know, a hundred times where you're like, surely he would utterly destroy Arnie at this point. Yeah. You know, you, you wouldn't just leave him to return at the end. But but then you think, well, okay, first of all, the T-1000, you know, he's malfunctioning at this point. Yeah. He's not he's not right of mind. Yeah. And you might be like, well, why, how does he not know that Arnold has a backup power supply? You know, whatever. Mm. But then I'm like, well, I mean, Arnold returns to life using the ultimate power supply, the power of friendship. That's right, exactly. And the T-1000 doesn't know anything doesn't about know that, that, does he? He's a diva. <laughs> you know, he doesn't know true friendship. No, he really doesn't, and he probably never will. Well, he got melted by that steel. Yeah, he did, big time. Mm. He changed it everyone when it was melting. Uh, and then it's really sad because the Terminator has to be like, I'm dying. Yeah. I'm dying big time. But also at that point, he's so fucked up where it's like, dude, you got to go. Yeah. You can't be walking around. Yeah, we can't take you through an airport or at the movies or anything. <laughs> And you are, what are oh, it'll gonna, heal up, will it? Yeah. Mm, I don't know, man. We're, we're going to keep you in a box? Like, <laughs> <laughs> what, what, are you, what, are we, what are we doing here? Yeah. yeah. No, you can't be walking around like that. Um, oh, also, shout out to Joe Morton as, uh, as Miles Dyson. Oh, yeah. Oh, got to be one of my favourite. Got to be one of my favourite, you know, just... Uh, Guy breathing heavily before he dies. Oh, my God. Some incredible work. Iconic. Yeah. Great, great, great stuff. Completely agree. Mm. This is a good movie. It is a good movie, isn't it? I don't it? care what anybody says. <laughs> I mean, I don't care about the people who make a comment and go, actually, this is a good movie. Caravan of Garbage, you're a caravan of garbage. Mm, We know. We suck, all right? We could never make this movie. And neither could you. That's right. Unless you're James Cameron. In which case, you did and well done. Anyways, it's time for Trivia 2. Judgment Trivia. I don't know. I wrote Trivia 2, Trivia 2. I don't don't know. I'm losing it. Mm. I'm losing it, Mason. (laughs) I think I need to see a doctor. I think you do. (laughs) I've been saying that. Uh, Yeah, because my first bit of trivia just says, Piss cake. Um, that's the, John Connor does say he's, <laughs> he's saying a piece of cake. No, he says piss. He cake. does say piss cake. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a real one small step for a man, <laughs> one giant leap for mankind situation. That's right. Arnold Schwarzenegger was given a slightly used Gulfstream three airplane worth about forty million by producer Mario Caza for accepting a role in this film, a role of the Terminator. Mm. But he also got paid money, right? He got paid also fifteen million dollars mm. for his seven hundred words. That he spoke. I mean, he also did other acting. He did a lot of yeah. other acting, yeah. He got very fit. He did. Yeah. They put out that cigar on him. Did they? Yeah, for real. That's rude. That's rude. That's for real. Here's, here's something that is rude. Linda Hamilton got $1 million. That is I rude. Which I think is... Yeah. <laughs> that would probably explain I mean, it's, she... it's a lot. It's a lot of money, obviously. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sigourney Weaver got a million for Aliens, but still. I mean, she's putting in, she's putting in the hard yards Mate, in this movie. Yeah. She's, I mean, and that would probably explain her reluctance to come back from... Most of the sequels. Some oh, of the sequels. Yeah. I mean, she got that dark fake money now. That's true. Oh, she got paid a lot for that, right? Absolutely, she yeah, did. good, good. Here's the amount. Nice. I didn't look it up. Lawrence looked it up. 
Edward Furlong immediately got along with Arnold Schwarzenegger. As the actor had not grown up with a father figure, uh -huh. uh, Linda Hamilton joked that she experienced excruciating moments as she was forced to listen to Arnold give Furlong advice about women and stated they got along so well because they were emotionally the same age. There you go. Fun stuff. Yeah, yeah. Just breathe some cigar smoke into their face. <laughs> That's right. They will fall in love. When uh, Also be Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. If you can do that, if you can do that. It's easy. Yeah. He did it. Anyone can do it. Mm-hmm. When the team, the team, mm -hmm. they're, they're a team, they break into the- The Terma team. That's right. They break into Cyberdyne systems. Sarah is wearing Kyle's grey trench coat from the first movie. Oh, Which yeah, I okay. think is true. It looks like it anyway. I mean, they had a, they had a trench coat on hand because in the extended edition, there's a- Oh, yeah. The dream sequence. That's right. Michael Bean, Mr. Bean makes an appearance. Mm -hmm. Denzel Washington turned down the role of Miles Bennett Dyson. He said, no offense to Jim Cameron, but when I read the script, I thought, all he does is look scared and sweat. I had to pass. <laughs> Yeah, fair it's, enough. Good role, though. Yeah. 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 Relatable to the common man. Completely. I'm great. always <laughs> staring and sweating. Yep. There is a resistance soldier that you find in the game Terminator Resistance that looks like Robert Patrick. Now, that game is canon in terms of the Terminator law. I mean, it's all canon. Everything right. Terminator related is canon because it's multiple fucked up timelines. That is true. So, what you're suggesting there is that the T1000 was based. Yeah. Visually on this on resistance soldier. Okay, yeah. right. It's in the game. Okay. Uh, and that's fun. That is fun. Yeah. I like fun. Often people say the real Terminator trilogy is that resistance game, Terminator 1. Mm -hmm. Go on. Terminator Genesis. No one's ever said. No, no, no. It's the most tonally and image wise, like consistent okay. with the first two movies All of right everything, then. I would say. Sure, okay. Yeah. Anyways, in terms of box office, on a budget of around $100 million, it was the most expensive movie of all time. It made five hundred and twenty million, and that's on its initial release. It did huge numbers in terms of merchandise, like re-releases, special editions. Mm -hmm. You know that toy where you you make the Arnold skin around the Terminator, and then you can peel the skin off. Oh yeah, yeah, man. They sold a bunch of those probably. Well, yeah, could you you could only use them all at once. Yes, yeah, <laughs> to true. buy another one every, every time. Mom, I want to make the Terminator well, again. The Terminator skin. Yeah, the opening titles of this alone was the same budget as the first Terminator. Damn. That's what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, there was actually going to be another Terminator 3 before the one that we got. Okay. Where Edward Furlong was going to come back. Mm -hmm. James Cameron was going to be part of it. There was kind of a TX kind of style Terminator in it. This is a whole other thing we'll discuss in another video when we do Terminator, more Terminator sequels. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's worth looking into if you are if you're interested in the real Terminator Three or the oh, original hell yeah. Terminator. We're 3. gonna get one eventually. Absolutely. But you know what I like seeing? What's that? I like seeing things at BigSandwich.co. Good, good. Link. For example, good, good segue. For example, go on. These videos always go up there early. Here's a hint towards next week. Fucked if I know. Blank schedule, Mason. All right. What do you got? What are you thinking? Terminator Four. Because we've done three. Yeah, I, I kind of want to do... Oh, you know, I don't know. Hellboy. There we go. Oh, you know, We're doing great. Hellboy. There we go. And then I have nothing. Hellboy 2. Yeah, Hellboy 2, probably. Mm, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But that's not the only thing there. It's not just early videos. Do you know what else there is? Uh, there is a uh, bonus podcast. That's right. There's movie commentaries. Yep. There's video game Let's Plays. That's right. Now, speaking of, we have done bonus podcasts on a couple of Terminator comics, which That's are right. worth checking out. Including Robocop versus the Terminator. That's right. We also played a bunch of Terminator 1 and Terminator 2 video games. Uh, on our series that's exclusive there, Never Go Back, where just just watch me just just hammer through a bunch of bad games. Oh, there's also a video from many years ago where we read Robocop versus the Terminator 2. Oh, yeah. Which was where Robocop inserts himself into the movie Terminator 2. That is on this channel. That is free. <laughs> that's free. That's not paywall. Oh, maybe I'll take it down and yeah. paywall it. <laughs> What, a, what an incredible comic. Mm. Anyways, if you do want to sign up, that helps support the show, keeps it ad-free. We really appreciate it, but of course you don't have to. You might just want to check out our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. That comes out every Monday if you are interested. It's got us on YouTube channels, on Spotify. It's on other platforms, Apple, whatever. I love that. I love The Terminator. Oh, you know what? The bit where the T-1000 just walks through the... The hospital, like the gate. Yeah. Oh, it just passes all the way through. And his gun gets stuck. Yeah. Oh, my God, I love that and moment. And that guy's like, what the freaking hell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. said this shit wasn't real. Yeah. And I'm looking at it. <laughs> Crazy. Mm. Good movie. Mm. All right, thank you to Lawrence for the edit. Thank you, Lawrence. And we'll see you in the next one. Grab that, Jamie, guys. We'll see you next week.